Hey sweetest potatoes, so today we are going to study about the primary culture in animal cell culture. So the primary culture, uh, it includes uh, obtaining the primary cell culture. It includes three steps that is fine dissection, mechanical dissection and somatic dissection. And that again includes three uh, types and then we'll conclude it. So what is primary culture? So a primary culture is, is the stage of a culture after isolation of the cells but before the first subculture. And whenever you want to obtain a primary culture, there are four stages to it. That is accusation of the sample, isolation of tissue, dissection or disaggregation and culturing after the uh, seedling into the culture vessel. So, uh, so when after you isolate the primary uh, cell culture and uh, the cells are allowed to migrate uh, from those fragments of tissues by uh, attaching to a suitable substratum and then or uh, you can uh, disaggregate the tissues mechanically or enzymatically and then produce a suspension of cells and uh, and the enzymes used uh, usually uh, crude enzymes are used for the preparation and it is found to be better than using the um, purified enzymes by let's say let's say question and there are also many mammalian enzymes like uh, trypsin, triple by uh, different companies uh, which has been used. Okay. And uh, so whenever you are isolating a tissue, first thing you have to check is that um, uh, it, it works with all the ethical uh, rules are cleared. And this primary culture, it is mainly divided into this technique is mainly divided into mechanical and enzymatic disaggregation so in uh, the main difference is that in mechanical when you have a, a lot of tissue like a larger amount of tissue then what you do is you, you do the mechanical uh, disaggregation and when you have small amount of tissues uh, and better yield is given using the enzymatic disaggregation so whatever type uh, of thing you are doing and these are the uh, common procedures what you have to follow that is the fat and necrotic tissues are best removed during disaggregation and the tissue should be finely chopped and the instrument should be sharp so that you will not damage the cells and the enzymes have to be removed uh, before uh, like they should be removed by centrifugation so if the enzyme remain in the cells then it can kill the cells and the concentration also should be um, higher so that uh, the survival rate is low and the uh, isolation uh, of specific cell types will require selective medium and embryonic tissue uh, disaggregates more readily and proliferates rapidly than, uh, than the uh, adult tissues because the embryonic tissues are able to divide faster then the adult tissues have certain limitations. It's always better to use embryonic tissue disaggregates. So yeah, so coming to this uh, isolation. So here uh, we have a whole chart. This, uh, if you learn this chart, this is enough for the whole primary culture. So when you first thing what you what you have to do is you will isolate the tissues. Right, and then you will disaggregate that is select the tissues by removing the fat and necrotic cells and then uh, and then after this uh, dissection can be done by three methods okay the first one is called as the fine dissection then you have the mechanical dissection and then you have the enzymatic dissection so in fine dissection you have something called as the primary explant that is chopping down the uh, explant size you're reducing the size and that is referred to as primary explant so this uh, primary explant so originally this uh, method was developed by two people that is Harrison and Carroll in the year uh, 1907 and uh, 1952 and uh, it was first done for a tissue a fragment which was embedded in the blood plasma or limb uh, which was mixed with heterologous serum or embryo extract 
so heterologous serum uh, the use of that thing was just to induce the clotting of plasma and now uh, this technique is been uh, replaced by the method uh, which is given in this protocol which we'll be studying later uh, so yeah so that is how you do the uh, explant okay so the explant is taken and then it is overgrown and then uh, the primary explants uh, they form the secondary explants and finally you'll subculture them and then you'll get a cell line so now coming to the second one that is um, the mechanical dis uh, dis disaggregation so what happens here so in mechanical disaggregation uh, what you do is that uh, you just mechanically uh, disaggregate the cells by sieving, syringing and vigorous pipetting and finally you get a primary culture, subculture and then you get a cell line. In enzymatic disaggregation you have three other steps that is uh, that is cold trypsin, warm trypsin and collagenase. Cold trypsin is left overnight uh, for short incubation time whereas warm trypsin is for long incubation and for repeated sampling and collagenase is for long incubation and for complete uh, medium and you'll centrifuge, resuspend the medium and then you'll subculture them and the cell line is obtained. So uh, this is how, how do you do a, a primary explant culture. So, uh, so when you're doing a primary explant culture, you have to take the tissue, chop the tissues and then wash it and resuspend it and then uh, you have to use um, You'll take all those pieces what you've got after resuspending and then you'll, you'll incubate it overnight and then uh, and then the medium is used like the medium is used up, up to 24 to 48 hours. The medium is made up so that uh, the cells will get some nutrient medium to grow and after one week you can see that the whatever you, if you put a explant here because by using all this medium they start growing in both the sides and this is how uh, initially uh, our explant was placed for mouse squamous skin carcinoma and later when the explant was removed and then the new cells were allowed to grow and this was the type of growth which was seen so so this is the uh, protocol for primary explant. So the tissue is chopped finely, rinsed and seeded into the culture well uh, with the medium of about uh, 40 to 50 percent of serum. And uh, and these are the uh, different uh, these are the materials uh, which you need. And the protocol it involves uh, the same thing like the ones we told uh, there. And here uh, there are some details about the temperature the surface area and surface area of the flask so you have to remove the flow medium when when you see about 25 25 centimeter of the growth and you'll keep it in incubator at 37 degrees celsius for 18 to 24 hours and if you see the pieces are added uh, then uh, you have to make up the volume for, for the next uh, three to five days 5 ml for 25 centimeter square and then you can see the proper growth of the cells so the cells should not be deprived of uh, the growth medium and once uh, too much of growth is seen you can just uh, remove the uh, remove pick it pick the explant using a scalpel and then they're transferred into a fresh vessel and the medium and uh, is allowed to spread uh, for about 50% of the growth and then after after you see 50% of the growth then you will allow it for subculture so after doing this so all what we are talking about is that the, in the primary culture it can be disaggregated by three methods just a recap so for the first one is by primary explant and then you have enzyme disaggregation and uh, enzyme uh, dissection, enzymatic dissection as well as um, mechanical dissection. So what we are talking about is about the uh, primary explant. So you did the dissection everything and next uh, step uh, is that you have to attach the explant. 
So to attach the explant, the adder and migration is stimulated by placing on a glass cover slip on top of the explant. So uh, near the edge of the cover slip, it is usually placed so that it can attach to the surface and grow. And this attachment can also be promoted by using uh, treating the plastic with a polylysin or fibronectin or feed layer or plasma cloths were used in olden days. Nowadays, they use a purified fibrogen thrombinus used. And enzymatic uh, disaggregation, how they do uh, for this plant ex uh, explants is that you know that uh, the cells will attach each other by cell addition molecules are present uh, in the glycopeptides. And these cell addition molecules, uh, they are also called as CAMs. And there are also calcium dependent ones, which are called as cathodins. So what happens is that this EDTA and EGTA, uh, they are very, uh, these cells are very sensitive. Uh, so so they, when you add them, it leads to the disaggregation. Now uh, we are uh, going to enzymatic dissection. So hopefully you won't get confused. So we have just, uh, we just have a recap. So what we finished is, um, yeah. So we finished everything about the primary explant and now we are going to the enzymatic disaggregation which includes cold trypsin, warm trypsin and collagenase. So warm trypsin. So in enzymatic disaggregation in which conditions you will use warm trypsin and which conditions you will use cold trypsin and collagenase is what we are going to learn. So warm trypsin, it will minimize the exposure of the cell uh, to active trypsin and maximize the viability. This method is useful if you're using a whole uh, tissue. And uh, once trypsinized, it should be collected. You cannot uh, keep, keep it in warm trypsin for a long time. If you keep it, then the cells will die. So you have to collect it every half an hour and uh, you have to remove the trypsin by centrifugation process. And these are usually done for a uh, whole mouse, uh, chick embryos. And you cannot, it cannot be done for adult uh, connective tissues. And if you find that sometimes what happens is that since you're keeping it only for some time, uh, you can see uh, re-aggregation, like the cells coming together. So if that happens, then you have to add these uh, things, that is the DNA sent to 20 micrograms. And then again, re-centrifuge them. And this is usually done for a large amount of tissues, can be uh, done for a, in a short period of time. And uh, this is how it is done. So you'll uh, you'll collect the tissues and then you will chop it and resuspend it in the uh, medium and then add it to the flask with the warm trypsin. Keep it every 30 minutes. You have to remove the stirrer and then add the trypsin into the residual uh, pieces and again stir it. And then you collect the supernatant and store it on ice. And after that, you also count the cells. So in the last step, what you do is that you'll count the cells using uh, the microscope to see if they're uh, divided properly. And yeah, this is all about uh, warm trypsin. Now, trypsinization of cold presses. So one of the main disadvantage of this warm trypsin is that when you keep it for a long time at uh, 37 degrees Celsius, the cells can be killed or the cells can be damaged. So one of the uh, ways to minimize the cell damage is to soak it in uh, a trypsin which is kept at 4 degrees Celsius for uh, 16 to 8 hours so that it will allow the penetration of the enzyme with little tryptic activity. So uh, this procedure uh, it will require only uh, 20 to 30 minutes at 37 degrees Celsius for higher yield of viable cells and they survival even after 24 hours and you don't have those two extra steps that is stirring and centrifugation steps are not needed because you are already incubating the trypsin for a long time but you are keeping the temperature low so here oh, what you do is you will collect the cells you will chop the cells same as that and resuspend it in the medium and then replace the uh, medium uh, the, the medium whichever your VDSS medium is replaced with trypsin it is kept in ice overnight Remove the trypsin and incubate it for 20 to 30 minutes and then you will um, disperse the uh, tissues by using a pipette and then you will seed it in the flask so you don't have to centrifuge or stir. 
and then you'll count it, uh, check the viability of the cells and also see if they have spread properly by using a microscope. So the next one is collagenase. So collagenase is uh, mainly used for these type of cells, that is embryonic, adult and malignant cells. And uh, the tissues, if the uh, tissues are either too fibrous or too sensitive, you cannot use trypsin because trypsin will kill the cells. So mainly for macrophages, which will adhere to the flask uh, during collagenase uh, treatment. And then it's also used for culture of human tumors. And collagenase... Um, And uh, usually uh, for uh, cells which are very, uh, for example, like epithelial cells which is produced is produced by collagenase of cold trypsin. So you can also combine two methods like cold trypsin as well as collagenase so that if, if the cell is very sensitive, uh, these uh, techniques are, uh, this, uh, this one is used for integration. So the procedure, how, uh, how it is done is uh, the sample is taken again, it is chopped, it is kept uh, it is resuspended, incubate, incubate the finely chopped in a complete medium, then disperse it by pipette and then transfer it into a tube and allow it to settle and collect the supernatant. Uh, so the supernatant is also collected, the sedimentation is also collected and it is grown because there might be some cells which are present and then it is allowed to grow in a uh, growth medium. Here, you are not the only difference is the steps are similar. The only difference is instead of using trypsin, you are using collagen, uh, collagenase for a specific type of cells which are kind of uh, sensitive, like the tumor cells and the epithelial cells and uh, all the cells which I mentioned previously. So, for these types of cells, um, you use collagenase to disintegrate. Now, coming to the uh, next thing, which is mechanical disintegration. So, the main, why do you do mechanical disintegration? Mechanical is you are not using any enzymes, you are just using uh, a force, a physical force to uh, separate the cells. So, the primary explant is a very slow process, the enzymatic digestion is very labor intensive, there is risk of uh, proteolytic damage to the cell, so you use mechanical disintegration is done. So, you will collect the cells uh, which is spilled out of the tissues, that is whenever you see there is more growth of the tissue of from the primary uh, explant and then you take it uh, slice it and then uh, you use you can either sieve it use syringe or pipetting and uh, one more advantage of doing this mechanical disintegration is that the cell suspension uh, you can get the cell suspension quickly uh, faster than the enzymatic uh, digestion because these processes involve a lot of steps and but the problem is again here uh, only some type of tissues uh, it is only um, it only works for some type of tissues so it works for tissues like um, it works only for soft tissues like you can see here like embryonic liver embryonic adult brain human animal soft tissues tumors and even with brain it is seen uh, yeah so only in these type of soft tissues you can do the enzymatic uh, Sorry, a mechanical sorry the mechanical mechanical disintegration so the main three there are three ways in which you can do one is scraping or spillage then you have uh, sieving and then syringing it's just by using a pipette you just mix the cells so just to summarize uh, the primary uh, culture so the disintegration of tissues and preparation of primary culture, it is one of the most important stage in the culture of the cells. And uh, if any cells are lost at this stage, you cannot recover them. And there are many different types of cell, uh, and there are different types of cell types. So it has, you have to choose the technique. So you, you cannot do mechanical uh, disintegration for only, it is only, uh, it only works for soft tissues. You cannot use it for something else. So in that way, you should know which type of cells and which uh, you should choose the method uh, properly. And uh, you also know that um, in general, trypsin is more severe uh, than collagenase because that is why uh, we, we do not use uh, trypsin for soft tissues. And collagenase does not uh, dissociate epithelial tissues. But this characteristic advantage uh, 
and mechanical disintegration is more quickly than collagenase but it damages more cells so the best approach is to select them so the main thing what we do is that we have to select the method which works best with the system and uh, and also additionally we can also use enzymes so in this way you'll be able to uh, get a primary culture and then slowly we'll start doing the rest of the things so with this uh, today's class comes to an end thank you for listening and consider subscribing so in the next class uh, we'll be studying about mouse embryos chick embryo and human biopsies so until then stay tuned and consider subscribing thank you